Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to tune some drums. I know a lot of you have been asking about this. So I have some drums that need some heads here, and I have the heads and everything I need to change them. So we're going to do that, and we're going to go through each drum one step at a time and show you what I do. It's not rocket science, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. We'll also be looking at a few different drum keys and the tune bot, which for some people it's a helpful way to tune drums if they haven't been doing it for that long. So I have here a Gretsch Centennial set. These are the drums that I've used uh, for most of my recent jazz videos. I'm sure you've all seen them. This drum set is from 1983. And right now I have Remo Coded Ambassadors on there. Normally I have calf heads on there, but this time of year it is late May in Charlotte, North Carolina. The weather is all over the place. We get rain, it's humid one day, it's cool the next. So the calf tends to go all over the place. So to preserve those heads, I take them off during this time of year and I put them back on in the fall. So we'll just be putting clear, um, just coated Remo Ambassador heads on these drums. That's what I've always used on these if I don't use the calf heads. And we also have a Tama Exotics kit from the 1990s. This is a really nice drum set. It's made of Bubinga. And right now I have some Evans heads on there. That's one of my teaching drum sets. I'm going to take those off and put some Remo pinstripes on there, which is a head I like a lot uh, for my kind of rock and funk drums. So we'll do these after we do the Centennials. So stay tuned and I'll clear some of this stuff off and we'll get started. So before we get started tuning, there's a few things you'll need. I normally use a drill driver to uh, take the heads off because it's much faster. I have a little bit here. Uh, you can buy these. There's basically a drum key that goes into a drill, an electric drill, battery operated is better. This is a little Bosch drill. I love these. They're very light, small, and you could set the torque on it pretty low so there's no danger of doing any damage if you're tight tightening it. So what I do is I just take the head off pretty quickly. Uh, we'll do that in a second. Also, <clears throat> you'll need a drumstick, a mallet. Uh, I use a Vibe mallet. It's all Gary Burton. Good vibes mallet and a timpani mallet for uh, to hear the drum softly uh, when I tap around it. So before we start, we'll let you hear this drum what it sounded like. It's around an F sharp right now. Might have gotten a little lower with the weather, and I'll let you hear this drum as well. So this drum's obviously badly out of tune. It needs new heads in a bad way. Again, this is for my teaching drum set. I only change these heads once a year, and they get played a lot. Uh, I am not going to be changing the bottom heads today. I change those every second time I change the top heads. The bottom heads do wear out, even though you're not playing on them. On this drum, they're Remo Ambassadors. And I believe on this drum, it's an Evans, kind of the equivalent of a clear ambassador. What happens is, as you play the drum, the air hits the bottom and makes it vibrate. And over time, that head will wear out. So I might change these heads, you know, I, normally every two times, but I can stretch it to every two or every three or four times. Uh, the bottom heads aren't that crucial, but you should change them every once in a while. Now, my performing kits, I'll change the heads pretty often. Uh, depending on how much I'm gigging, or if I played a loud gig, I'll change those every couple months. And that can get expensive unless you have a drum head deal. All right, so uh, we'll start by taking this head off. So put your drill in reverse, and we, could, we might skip ahead here, but... Use the slow setting. Now 
All right, so that's it. Now, you lift it off and just examine that rim inside and try to get any dirt off. There will be quite a bit. And I usually use a rag that's a little damp for that. And you'll make kind of a mess. So now I leave the lugs on. I should say the tuning lugs. And I'll just clean the inside of it, get all the gunk off. These heads have been on there for about four months, but I've been playing them every day for about seven hours since, since this um, pandemic started. So they're pretty dirty. So we'll put this aside. Now, unless that rim is warped or something, you don't need to worry about putting it on in the same spot. Some people mark them and all that. I do that with my timpani and my timpani heads and the rims, but I don't think you need to do it with the drums. So that's the head, obviously pretty worn out. And here's the drum. So this is a Gretsch Centennial Jasper Shell. It's got that little sticker in there. And it's a typical Jasper Thin Shell. Layer of gum wood in the middle. And these shells went into thousands and thousands of Gretsch drum kits. Now, one thing I do, do that a, not a lot of other people do is I use a little bit of beeswax around the rim every time I change the heads, just a tiny bit. So, and you don't want to use too much, but what this does, it keeps that lubricated and protected. The bearing edges of the drums, the top ones, take the most beating, obviously, of any part of the drum. And over time, if you play enough on them, and I play thousands and thousands of hours on these, they will start to actually physically wear. So what this stuff does is protects them. It also leaves a layer, a nice layer of coating on there so the head will slide around. And also what I'll do is while I have that head off, I'll kind of polish the drum just a little. And this stuff is kind of like a furniture polish as well, so it works really good. And I'm not a huge stickler for, I don't clean my drums on a regular basis uh, every once in a while, but I know some people do it all the time. I just don't have time to do that. But this is the kind of thing that I like to do every time I change the heads. Now, the other thing I do every time I change the heads, just wipe some of this residue off, is I will take some lug lube, and let's see if I can find it. Here it is. And I will put that in all the lugs. So the tension rods over time will get some dirt and they might even oxidize a little. So they'll get kind of rough to turn. This stuff makes sure that it doesn't happen. So you can get this from LP. You can even use a thin oil. Anything works. Uh, just some lubrication. And I'll just go around and put this, just a drop of it, in every single lug casing. So those tension rods will be nice and smooth. So that's done. And now I'll take, make sure your hands are clean. <laughs> and we'll get the new head here. So this is a 10 inch Tom. And I like to have the, um, the logo, if it matters to you, up in front. So if you're going to do one up on this drum, it'll be right here. So I just center that, like that, and I'll just make sure everything's good and smooth. And again, that, that stuff, uh, you know, the beeswax keeps it smooth. And I'll do that a little to make sure the head sits. Now on some of these older drums, you'll notice when you turn it like this, it, there's some resistance. That's because the drums weren't perfectly round. Now these Tama drums will be, but the Gretsch drums were not. It's kind of part of the charm of them. The, the shells were definitely not perfect. And if you lay that flat, sometimes you can, on a piece of glass, you can see where that bearing edge is a little funky. But again, the drums sound great, so who am I to complain? And then I'll take the rim and I'll seat it back on there and just make sure everything's fitting. Now, you want to make sure these tension rods go in straight. So 
put these in before you start tuning, obviously. <laughs> but put them all in is what I'm trying to say. All right. No, I just knocked our little shelf down. Let me fix that. All right. Tighten it up. Good. All right. And then press down a little like I was doing just to make sure it's seated right. Now, what I do is I take a towel like that and I'll press just a little. All right. Just to make sure everything's seated correctly. And I'll take my fingers and I'll tighten these lugs finger tight. This is a crucial part of tuning the drum because you want to make sure you get off on a good solid footing here with all these tension rods being somewhat even. So keep your hand on the rim and tighten it. And again, you can go around, not too much pressure, just a little. So you have a starting point. Now, we, we'll use the tune bot later, and I'll show you how I use that sometimes. You don't have to use it, obviously. It's kind of a new toy. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll take a regular drum key. Uh, speaking of drum keys, real quick, there's lots of ones I use. There's this Evans one. It's okay. It's kind of like a tension key. I don't know. Some people think it's useless. I use it for fun. I like a heavy key, though. This Evans heavy weighted key is nice. So I think they call it a magnetic key. It's got some weight to it, though. So I'll do a star tuning. So I'll start here with my hand on the rim and my forearm on the rim. And then there. And then there. There's five lugs on this drum. There. And then there. All right? Now, the other thing I'll do is I'll keep making sure this is sitting well. And I'll do it again. One, two, three, let's do this one. Okay. And then we'll see what we got. Let's do a little more. We're going for around an F sharp or a G on this drum. Now, at this point, I'm going to do something that's probably questionable to some of you. But here's what I do. I put the drum on the floor, and I use the heel of my foot, and I almost stand on it. Because what I want to do is break this glue seal. What happens with new heads is they have this glue in there. And as you're playing over the first couple days, that glue breaks loose. You keep after tuning up. It's a pain in the neck. And normally I'll put new heads on and I want to play them right away. I'll be recording. So to do that, you have to kind of break that seal. So I'm going to do that right now. And we don't need to show you a picture because you'll hear it. There it goes. So I won't stand on it, but I'll just take my heel of my foot. Now I weigh about 160, so I'm pretty light. But I'll just put the weight of my leg on it. You know, and I won't do a dance on it, but I'll do that, and that really breaks the seal of that glue. And then I'll go on with the tuning. All right. So let's see what we got. Good. Now it's slow still, but at this point, what I'll do is I'll turn it over, and we'll take a towel, put that on the table. So you do that to kill the vibrations from the top head. And we'll try to tune this bottom head. Now, to do this, I use a mallet normally. And here's where you can use this tune bot. If you guys don't know about this, I'm not going to do an advertisement for them. But it's okay. This is the studio version. Uh, your mileage may vary. But it does help you tune a little bit quicker. So I'll turn it on. What it does, it gives you the pitch uh, once you connect it to the rim of each lug, which is nice. It's fast. So we'll put that on there. Actually, it should go this way. So we got 244, 260, which is pretty close. And we're going to bring the 244 up. Good. That's good now. Mm -hmm. 
Now remember, as you tighten one of these, it affects especially the one across from it. So it's kind of a game, you're chasing it. Don't worry if you use one of these, it's impossible to get it absolutely perfect. But within 20 cents is a good way to go. So that's good. That's good. Let's go back to this one. Okay, and finally. And I'm now I use my ear. Good. The smaller the drum, the more difficult it is to tune to hear those pitches because they don't ring that much and they're pretty high. There we go. So now that's in tune. All right. You'll hear a little rattling because the tom. I'll tighten it up. All right, so we're on our way now with this. And now these drums tune up really high. I use a very high tuning when I play these, so we'll get this one up a little more. I'm not too picky about the star tuning thing once we get to this point. Now what I'm going to do is do that again with the heel of my foot. Hear that? That was the glue cracking. And you see how much I lost? I lost like a whole tone there. So, a whole step. Now we'll take it up again. Now normally I'm doing this really fast, so I'm slowing it down a little so you guys can see what I'm doing. So that's really, really high right now, okay? And now check the bottom. So it's a little bit choked, obviously. And we gotta fix this table. <laughs> so I'll take it down just a little, and then we'll tune the next drum. Normally on this kit, my tuning's like F sharp, A, F sharp, somewhere around there. Alright, good. So that's that one. Now, what we're going to do before we go on to the next drum here is tune this Gretsch, I mean this, um, sorry, Tama drum. Now this has a rim system, so just be careful when you take this off. It needs to go back in the right place. Uh, obviously, you know, or you're going to have some problems mounting it. Now this is uh, from a big kit that I have with lots and lots of drums. Today we'll just tune three of the drums. And I'm just going to take this off. And these haven't been changed in a long time. So this is going to be a filthy mess. Make sure it's going the right way. your breath. <laughs> there we go. All right, so you're going to need to remember if you look for the the um, air hole where this is in relation to that. Okay? And you see the logo there? That's how I know. So it goes to the left of that. Believe me, I've screwed that up before. All right, so ooh, that's dirty. Yeah, so that's all wood and dust there. All right. Okay, so let's clean this thing up a little. Now these are gorgeous shells. This is Bubinga ply all the way through. So no inner plies of any other wood. And these drums, I think personally, were the best made drums like ever as far as just being perfect. Perfectly flat, bearing edge perfect gorgeous finish I mean these folks are artists dusty <laughs> so but um yeah just just 
gorgeous drums. And you see how thin these shells are, just as thin as the Gretsch, which gives them a beautiful sound. That wood, that bubinga is so hard, it, it makes the drums very bright and they're very loud too. So if you want a bright, loud set for playing rock and other things, that's the wood to use, I think. And we'll go ahead and treat this again. So, and again, this isn't, isn't something you have to do, but I've always done it with all my drums. And I don't know if it makes it sound better, but, you know, I, I've never had a, any problems. And no one told me to do this, but I'm a woodworker, and I'm always putting finishes on things, and so that's kind of what I do. And you see, it just really, the dirt comes off, and it just darkens that up and it protects it. And it's not sticky in any way, this stuff. Like I said, it's a mix of beeswax, probably some lemon oil, I smell that. Kind of like a furniture polish. All right, so on these drums, I'm gonna use a pinstripe. If you don't know, a pinstripe is a double head. There's two heads. And these drum, uh, drum heads tend to have a good punch to them. They're very punchy, and you can tune them pretty low. They work great with um, bright drums, maple and, obviously, bubinga. Anything that's really hard. Oak, they'd probably sound great on those Yamaha oak drums. So that's one thing that, um, that you can try. And there's other comparable uh, drums that you can, you know, uh, drum heads that you can try. Now, again, this is going to be with the logo. So depending on where this is, that's how I'm going to mount it. So we'll put that between these two lugs, just a little superstitious there. And we'll take this and we'll wipe this down. It's pretty dang dirty. All right, and then we're going to take the lug lube and put that in really quickly. Just a drop. All right. Now this is important that you get this in correctly. And let me just check this. Good. I'm going to do one thing here. I'm going to move this just a little to there. There we go. Okay. Now this is that black nickel plated kind of hardware. It's really pretty. It does not oxidize at all, ever. I've had several of the Star Classic drum sets, three or four of them, and I've never had any trouble. Now I did have trouble with some of the lug casings breaking on one of my first Birch Star Classic set. And I talked to them about it and they didn't know what was going on, but they replaced them all. But no other problems since then. Now with these rims mounts, sometimes the lugs uh, and tension rods are hard to get to. Again, I'm not tightening it with this. I'm just getting it close enough so I can hand tighten it. All right, so once again, redundancy is good. So tighten them with your hand and remember to put your wrist and forearm on there. Put weight on there. Okay, a lot of people don't do that and then they wonder why they don't get a good start. And you're going to have to use a key, unfortunately. That's one bad thing about the rim mounts. You can't get in there and tighten. So you got to do that. So I'll just do it by feel. All right, so you go all the way around and press in. Hopefully this table won't collapse again. And then you can start your star tuning. Now, I'm not going to go nearly as high with this drum. 
these drums have a pretty low tuning. Now you hear the glue cracking already. All right, now listen to this. All right, <laughs> pretty scary. So that helps a lot. And if we hit it, that's probably where we're going to be. And then, then I tune the bottom head. So I make sure that's all in tune. You need both heads on there to do that. And remember to put your towel under there because otherwise you're, it's going to have some sympathetic vibrations. You could use a drum throne for this as well. Just put the drum on the drum throne. That works great as well. So let's see what we got. And we can use that. Well, we can do use our ears first. Yeah, that's pretty out. So we'll use this. And this is the thing, one thing I like about this. It makes it very easy to do. Pretty close. Not that one. So we got a couple high ones. And you just turn it the slightest bit. That's better. Now, when do I know how to change the bottom heads? Well, if I'm doing this and I'm using this thing and I can't get it even remotely close, it's time to change those heads. They're not holding tension. These are fine right now. They they were changed the last time I changed heads on this drum. All right, let's see what we got. Not bad. Now, if you want to know the note, you can use this thing or use any tuner uh, app. I like that TE tuner that I use on my phone. That's really nice. Um, so it'll give you the pitch for it. So right now, well, if we bring it up, it's a D, okay? D3 around, I think. So obviously I tune these quite a bit lower than the Gretsch. Now, new heads always take a while to settle in. So I usually give them a week, uh, and then they start sounding great. Timpani heads can take two weeks or more when, when we change those to settle in. The worst thing you can ever do is change a set of timpani heads before a concert, because they have to settle in. This beeswax thing I've found helps a little bit with that. It sits, the head sits in there. But once they settle in, they start, you know, all drums start sounding great. So if you can get them sounding good like this, you're gonna be in good shape. And with the mallet, perfect. All the way around. Now what I'll do, I'll show you with my foot, is I'll do it one more time. All right. Now that some of that was a double head you heard one head hitting another, but, and that'll help settle it in. All right, good. Now, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna change some of these other heads. I think you get it by now. And then I'm gonna show you how to do a snare drum, which is a little bit different, so stand by. So before we move on to the snare drum, I wanted to show you how to tune a bigger drum. This is a mounted tom, a 14 inch by 12 drum. And sometimes they can be a little trickier to tune. So I wanted to go over uh, some of these tools a little more. I don't think I spent enough time on them before. This is something I haven't showed you yet. This is a drum dial. I know some of you are aware of this. This works with tension. So you'd put it on the head and it shows you the tension of each lug. And that's effective for larger drums. I'll sometimes use it. It's great for timpani. I use it on timpani quite a bit. My um, other go-to tuning tool, like I showed you before, is this TuneBot. I think it works really well. This works with pitch, like vibration. So it's kind of like a tuner for drums, like a guitar tuner, but for drums. And it's supposed to be mounted like this. Sometimes I mount it like that if I'm showing a student how to tune, which is fine, but then I just can't see it. So we'll do that for a second so you can see it, hopefully through one of these cameras. Uh, this unit is the studio version. There's several different versions of this. Um, and it works fine. It has things where you can store your drum kits. It shows you the pitch, 
the, the range in cents. So, you know, it'll show you what note. If it's A440, it'll show you that. Uh, we're probably not going to get that high today. Uh, most of these drums are going to be lower in the C3 or C4 range, probably. All right, so I'll, I'll see if I can go around this and you can see this dial, how it works. And then we'll flip it around. I usually use a mallet, like I said, because that gives me a little better tone on the drum. And then you want to make sure under it, once again, you have your towel. So I forgot to do that. We'll do that now. And that's to muffle that top head. So. So this is the bottom head. So you saw how that worked. Let me take a look at it now. So we should be around an F. That's usually what I tune this drum to. It's pretty close, about 180, 178. So that's F3. If you um, are a couple cents off, that's not a problem at all. Now, we'll do the top head. That's the one we changed. So always do the bottom first if I haven't changed that. And again, the goal is to get both heads the same. So let's see where we're at here. I just tightened this one up. We're a little off, I can tell. First, I'll show you what it says. So I can hear we're pretty off. Now I can hear that with my ear, and normally I just tune it with my ear. But I'll show you how I use this. So I'll set it like this, and then we'll get one pitch, which is an F, just like the bottom, which is good. And then we'll hit it in the middle, and that's an F as well. Now we'll start going around where the tension rods are. Now, the funny thing about this TuneBot thing is that sometimes I hear things low, but it doesn't change, which has always kind of bugged me. But So I don't, like, use this as the gospel. You know, I'll just change what I hear. So I hear this uh, pitch low, so I'll bring that up just a little, a tiny bit. And remember, one uh, tuning rod, one lug affects the whole drum, so just go little bitty steps there. That's better. I'm hearing this a hair high. Just that much, hardly at all. And I'm hearing these two just a hair low. So we're talking about an eighth of a turn, not even. That thing's right on, 176 F3. And then just for kicks, we'll see the bottom head once again. And the goal is to get it to be the same pitch. So that's where this thing comes in really handy. So I'm hearing that a little bit sharp. So again, we'll take down one, just one. Don't go all the way around, just do one at a time. And I'll do a couple more. a little bit high. Hardly anything there. I'm hearing these a little low. That's not telling me that, but I'm hearing it, so. So I'll keep doing this for a while when I'm tuning and I'll get it as perfect as I can. Now remember what I said before, you gotta let the head sit because when you first put them on, they're kind of in shock. It's like getting a haircut, you know, you go get your haircut, it's in shock for a couple days and then it starts looking okay. I really need a, to get a haircut. <laughs> All right, so now let's hear what this sounds like with a stick. A 
not bad. It might be a hair low, but I'll let this sit for a couple days. I'll play on it, and then we'll try to tune it again. That's what I normally do. I'll tune the drums up and then play them and then take them off and tune again. And that's when everything is fine for months after that. Now, sometimes when you play these drums, if they're not really good drums, some of these lugs will come loose. That's common. There are some mechanisms uh, that you can buy that lock the lugs into place. Uh, I would suggest those if you're having that problem because you can be playing a session or something and you won't even notice it until the end of the session when you see one of your lugs lying on the floor. So you know the drum was not in tune when you're doing that. That shouldn't happen with really good drums, but it, it does happen with some drums, and I've had it happen. So that's something to keep your eye on. And, you know, always try to tune your drums. Uh, you need to become kind of an expert at it and your kit. So whatever kit you get, you need to learn all the ins and outs of that. So let's go on to a snare drum. Uh, we'll be right back. The last drum I have today to tune is this uh, Exotics Tama snare drum. Now, I got to tell you, I'm a little embarrassed, but this is the original head. I've never changed this before. So this drum has never been opened. God knows what's going to pop out, but because <laughs> uh, it just sounds great still. It'll probably not sound as good once I take that head off. So I might get a little emotional. Anyway, this is a really, really nice snare drum, all original. The shell on their snare drums for this series is a little thicker. Now, one thing I didn't say before with the toms, but I should have, is that I tune both heads the same pitch. I think that's really important. You can tune the top higher than the lower um, head and get a little fall off if you like that. And the Gretsch drums are kind of famous to floor times for being a little growly, uh, unless you put like pinstripes on there, but I don't. So with, with a thinner head, those big Gretsch drums tend to have a little bit of a growl or a little bit of a fall off, no matter what you do. They just do with the thinner heads. With the thicker heads, not much of a problem. So I do tune my, all my drums the same, except my snare drums. With the snare drums, almost always, even my concert snare drums, I tune the bottom head tighter than the top. Now, when you raise, in other words, uh, turn on this strainer, that snare uh, mechanism engages, the snares engage, and it literally brings up that bottom head even higher, like a minor third, so I'm told by a friend of mine who measured it. So... Uh, that helps also, but I like the response of a tighter bottom head. Now, I'm not talking about a lot tighter, but maybe one half turn tighter. The other trick I use on the bottom, because we're not going to be changing that bottom head today, because uh, I'm out of uh, really thin diplomats, and that's what I use for snare side diplomats, which are like cellophane. Anything else is not going to be sensitive. Right now, this is a hazy. Uh, 300 which is thin so I'll just leave that on there but what I do on my snare drums is I'll tune the lugs closest to the strainer a half turn tighter and what I find is that helps with some of the snare buzz problems sometimes a lot so you can experiment with that but that's an old trick that I learned um, from a guy at uh, the power station in New York an engineer there or avatar I think it's gone now, but uh, it was the power station, then it was Avatar, or maybe the other way. But anyway, I used to work there quite a bit back in the 80s, and he showed me that. He wasn't even a drummer. He said someone had showed it to him. It might have been Steve Gadd, actually, who showed it to him. So I think that's really cool, and it works. It doesn't take all that buzz away, but it does take some buzz away. So we're going to open this thing up. I wanted to do this on camera because uh, it's pretty filthy, and it's going to probably be hilarious. So... Let's give it a shot. Uh-oh. <laughs> it doesn't want to come off. Whew. It's tight.
So this is a 10 lug drum. Now this head's been on there since the early 90s. So it's 30 years old. Here we go. <laughs> wow. Look at all that. I'm not even going to shake it off because there's just so much crap on there. Nothing living though. No nests of birds. All right, so we'll put that down and I'll probably hang this on my wall. All right, so everything's looking pretty good. I've never had this open, so it smells good, that's for sure. I still smell the glue. Let's see if there's a year on here. It's signed Taka Horahino, something like that. Wow, pretty cool. All right, well, yeah, let's put our stuff on. All right, now I'm going to, what we're going to do, and we have this 10 lug drum, we're going to do something a little different because it's a lot, a lot of lugs. Yeah, a lot of dirt came off. So I'd recommend you do this. And then make sure you dry it off. I just, I like these uh, camera wipes to do this because they're completely lint free. So don't use a paper towel. You could get some of these microfiber cloths. I get them at Harbor Freight. I buy five at a time. Sometimes they're free if you buy something else. I have a ton of them. And uh, these are great for cleaning up drums and dust and all that. Why this is off, I'll clean this thing up just a little here. Okay. So now, I'm using a coated ambassador. That's kind of my just normal, everyday go to snare drum. I use um, snare drum head. I go through lots of lots of snare drum heads. So I have all kinds of different ones. I have Evans, I have Aquarians. Uh, I can tell you the good and bad things. I like the Evans heads usually. They're kind of bright, I think. They're all a little different, but the stratas are bright. The Aquarian heads I really like. The problem I've had with Aquarian heads is they chip, especially the ones that are coated. They all chip, all the ones I've used. Now, I haven't used any of the newer ones if there are, but I have some from about two or three years ago. They did the same thing. Uh, they had a head called a vintage head that I really liked, but it started chipping, so then when I played brushes, the brush would get stuck, and that pissed me off. So I stopped buying those. And these ambassadors, they don't do that. They just wear out. Um, so, you know, they wear out pretty quick too. That's why I use calf heads normally on my snare drum. A calf head will never wear out. Thing is, they're expensive and they will break and you gotta babysit them. And this time of year, and especially on this drum set, which I teach on, and I have students play on it, uh, and some of them play pretty hard, uh, I don't want them breaking a hundred dollar calf head. So, the ambassador is fine. If you're a really heavy hitter, you can use an emperor, which is two ambassadors. Or maybe an ambassador and a diplomat. I don't know. One of you will tell me, I'm sure. So uh, that's what I like to use as my go-to on snare drum. We'll clean this up. Pretty gross. Now these are die cast hoops. They're very heavy on all these uh, older Tama kits. All right, and then we'll do our lug lube really quickly so you don't get bored. We might skip this part. Now, if you take um, your lugs off of an old, like, Radio King or something, they're probably going to be kind of a mess and even rusty. You can soak those in some WD-40 or some other rust-removing lubricant. Just make sure you know what they're made out of first and maybe check to see if that's safe. But... I've had lots of old drums and the lugs were just gross and so I soaked them and that rust will come off and then you can take a Dremel tool with a little brush and hold that, um, I keep saying lugs but they're tension rods, sorry, uh, hold that tension rod with a pair of needle nose pliers and just put on some goggles please and use that brush for the Dremel tool and that will take all that rust off and almost get them like new. Uh, that's one thing I've done a lot on my older drums, and those lugs are the original uh, lugs and uh, lugs tension rods. And sometimes they're, um, you know, those things are over 
a hundred years old on some of my old Ludwig uh, drums that I have. Okay, so same thing with this. I like to put, uh, you know, the Remo logo up. And if you would have marked your rim, now would be the time to get it back where it was. But I'm not going to do that because these drums are just about perfect. See how smooth that goes. And like I said before, one thing about like a lot of the older drums, they're not really that round anymore. And just to show you, actually, that I'm not lying, check this out. Do you remember the resistance I had with that Gretsch set where I turn it and it would get stuck? This is like, you know, so smooth. And that's what well, that's because these drums are perfect. So if you find one of these old exotics kits and even the star classic maples, I have some of those. I'll do a, a drum set video soon of all my rock and funk kits, and this will be one of them. And I had um, I have one more left, Star Classic Maple. The other ones I either sold or gave them to people. Uh, and that's a really nice 22-inch bass kit. And that's just like this. It's a maple kit, and it's gorgeous. And never a problem with that thing. All right, so we may skip ahead at this point so you don't fall asleep. But I'm going to put this back on, and I'll, I'll do a rare video edit, <laughs> which I hate doing. <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and um, show you how I tune this up. All right, so I got this thing all uh, ready to go to tune it. So we'll start out doing our star tuning. Now, there's 10 lugs, so it's a little tricky. But remember, keep some weight on that rim. It's a little more difficult with the larger drums. you got to put your arm across. Now, sometimes you can take a stick and do that, all right? And that's what I normally do on the bigger drums. So you just take your stick, and you can get something longer, a wooden dowel. But I like to do that. Just put pressure on it as I go around. Here goes that table again. <laughs> and then I'll go around and do this. The bigger the head, the more, um, you know, the more uh, or the less tension there'll be at first. The smaller heads are going to be tighter. So you just want to make sure that thing gets on there correctly. All right. Now, I'll do my foot thing. You can close your eyes if you need to. And we'll go around again. All right, that's pretty tight, and I'll do it one more time. Again, I'm just using one foot, the heel of my foot, just putting a quick weight right in the middle of it. And that breaks that glue seal. You can hear it. All right, and then we'll listen to it with the snares off. Now, obviously the snares are on here, and I don't, do not take these off when I'm tuning the drum, okay? And like I said before, that bottom head should be a little higher. That's the way I do it than the top head. Now, one thing you can do, and I've done this before, is take those snares and put something under them like this, and then just check around. And it should maybe be a little bigger than this. This is just about perfect, though. Now, the head's going to be pretty well muffled, but you can hear it. Sorry. Now you hear the difference there because remember I brought these up uh, to show you that trick. 
All right. So without taking the snares off, with which is kind of a pain. Good. It's pretty close. All right. Now, now I'm not saying you can't take the snares off, but I don't. Not bad. Now what I'm going to do is put a little more tension on it, and then we'll look at that tune bot thing and see where we're at. You notice how I keep one hand or finger on the original lug. That's so I don't lose track. It's really easy to lose track when you're tuning up a drum with a lot of lugs. And the snare drums are going to always have the most lugs of any drum you tune up. Some have eight. Well, some have six. They're not very good. But the eight and tens are fine. They're all great. And the ten ones can, uh, lug ones can be a pain to tune. Now we're talking. So I'll do that thing one more time. And then when I don't get any cracking, careful. when I don't get any cracking, then I know we're good. And that's pretty much settled. Now you can take that um, TuneBot thing if you want. You don't have to. This is just extra stuff. Being anal retentive here. And you can go around and check it out. So normally I'll tune the top of my tighter snare drums to around a C or C sharp, you know, maybe like C4. This right here is a C sharp. It's varying pretty wildly. It's good. That's that's a bad one there. I must have missed that. That's what happened when I was talking. Probably the first time around, I missed that one, a whole half turn when I was going around. And that's typical. So that's where this thing can be super useful uh, to check that. Because there's no way you'd really know. I mean, you could use your ear, but snare drums are so tight, it's tricky. And um, again, it's not going to be the end of the world if one lugs a little out. It'll probably just go out from playing it. But it does help to have it all even all the way around. So let's put this on a stand, see what it sounds like. played in a while. <laughs> Sounds good. It's a good drum. Very sensitive, this um, Tama drum. Of course, there's no muffling on it. And this drum tends to sound pretty snary. I think it's because the wood is so hard. You get a nice snare sound out of it. If we bring up the snares, let's see what happens. Nice. So that's the first time I've ever changed the head on this drum, and it still sounds good. Thanks for that. <laughs> All right, good. So I hope this helped you. Um, we didn't get to bass drums today, but let me say a quick few things about that. So on my jazz kits, I like to either use fiber skins 
on both sides or calf heads. Or I'll mix a fiber skin and a calf head. I do that sometimes too. I like uh, the front head, the head facing the audience. I call that the front head. Uh, to be calf almost always. Uh, if I can, you know, the weather, weather permitting. And then the batter head where the bass drum beater hits, that can be calf or a fiber skin. So that's the head choice I like for my jazz drums. Also, the skin tone heads, the new ones, I've played that a few times, those a few times, and those are really nice. Those are Remo as well. Now, on my um, rock kits and funk kits, I love the Aquarian EQ series bass drum heads. It's kind of like a double head. It's got some muffling. I really love those. There's an EQ1 and an EQ2. They're both great. They sound a little different. I've pretty much put those on all of my kits uh, with a bass drum bigger than 20 inches and even some of my 20-inch kits. And again, we're about to do that video uh, soon with all those kits. I love that head. I think that's just a, the greatest sounding drum head. So once I start using that, I just use that all the time. So I can't really talk about any other heads because that's what I use. Now, on the front head facing the audience, I will use the logo heads on those drums, and some of them will have holes in them. Uh, that Tama kit I showed you has a calf head on the front. It actually came with that a really cool earth tone head that I've kept on there for all these 30 years. And you'll see that when I do that video. That drum is just insane. It's so big sounding. And it's a, that's a calf head. So you don't, you don't want to cut a hole in the calf head. That'll be disastrous. So there's no hole in that drum. Uh, and I do some recording with them, but I don't gig with those drums. So uh, maybe we'll do at some point some bass drum tuning, but it's not that much different than this. You just have to remember uh, that you can't normally use one of these because, you know, there's the um, tension rods are a little bit different. Some of the drums have the regular uh, tension rods, but uh, most of mine have the, the ones with the knobs. So yeah, it takes a little more time. It's time intensive. And I don't like putting muffling inside the drum. I like using those mufflers I showed you that Gary Chafee makes in my jazz drum video. I showed you guys that. Uh, sometimes I'll tape something to the head if I have to. I think the internal stuff is weird because it'll move around and it, you know, it can move around. Then you got to take the head off and whatever. So I don't normally put pillows and stuff in my drums. I muffle them from the outside, just like you would on a tom that has an internal muffler. You don't want to use that. So anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. You guys can do whatever you want. So thanks, and I hope this helped. And as always, keep sending me the questions. I enjoy that. Bye-bye.